Hello, my name is Neil Lyon from Skyway Software, and in this screencast, I will give you an overview and demonstration of the JSF and Prime Faces code generation capabilities of My Eclipse for Spring. So here's the agenda. We'll start by setting up a web project, and then we'll generate the JSF and Prime Faces software components. We'll deploy the application to Tomcat, and then we'll review the running application, we'll review the generated code, and then as a companion video, uh, this will be a separate video than the one that you're currently watching. We will actually provide you some tips on where you might want to get started in customizing the applications that were generated. Here's a high-level inventory of the different types of application components that can be generated using My Eclipse or Spring. As you can see, there are several application groups, and for each group there are many application components that can be generated. The focus of this screencast is JSF and Prime Faces cogeneration, and the primary goal is to generate respective application components. So at a minimum, I must direct My Eclipse for Spring to generate the JSF application group. However, I will also direct My Eclipse for Spring to generate the service, data access, and domain application groups, and here's why. One of the benefits of generating the other application groups is that you will end up with everything needed to immediately start validating and testing the generated JSF and Prime Faces components. You don't have to wait until the software components are integrated with the rest of your application to see them in operation. You will have a fully implemented application that can be immediately deployed and tested. Another benefit of generating the other application groups is that it serves as a reference implementation for how the generated JSF and Prime Faces components integrate or interact with the other components of an application. This helps new developers learn JSF and Prime Faces and associated best practices, and it also helps experienced developers quickly understand the dependencies of the generated software components. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is create a new project. So right click in the Package Explorer, select New Web Project, and I'll call this My Application JSF. And I'll just keep the defaults for everything else. And then the next thing is I need to go ahead and configure this project as a JSF project. And I accomplish that by right clicking on the project, going down to the My Eclipse menu, and selecting Add JSF Capabilities. And in this case, I'm, I'm interested in JSF 2.0, so I'll go ahead and select that from the specification level, and then click Finish. And uh, you'll notice that the uh, project icon was updated with the F little decorator on there which indicates that it's a JSF project and you'll also notice that the JSF libraries were automatically added to the project. So now what I want to do is to actually generate all of the software components, all of the configuration, both JSF and uh, Spring configuration files, and um, all of add all of the required libraries to the project that are needed for supporting this application. So I'm going to accomplish that by right-clicking on the project and selecting My Eclipse Scaffold Spring CRUD application. Now this is the wizard. It's covered. I've covered it extensively in several other screencasts that can be found on the My Eclipse for Spring YouTube channel. I will be zipping through this uh, wizard pretty quickly um, because I've spent uh, many other screencasts covering it in a lot more detail. So, um, so for this particular screencast, I'm going to go ahead and scaffold from a database schema, and so it's going to ask me where which database connection should be used, you know, to connect to that database schema. Um, what is the schema name? And here are a list of all the tables that are available within that schema. And so I'm going to go ahead and select these four tables for scaffolding. I'm going to specify that I want all of the all UIs generated for all of them. And I'm going to specify which pack what package name I want to use. So my application my application. Uh, is going to be the base package. All of the other package names are going to be derived from that, but I can override those if I want. And I'm going to specify that I want to generate the web layer, service layer, DAO layer, and the domain layer for this application. Um, here's a list of all the different web clients that are available. I'm specifically interested in JSF for this screencast. Um, if you're interested in these other ones, I encourage you to take a look at several of our other screencasts that are available. Um, and then the only other thing that I want to point out in this wizard, everything else is just default, um, is in this runtime dependencies panel, 
I'm uh, using Spring 3.0, and as a result of having selected JSF earlier in the wizard, the JSF and the Prime Faces libraries or class path containers are automatically going to be added to my project as well. So these, in other instances, these would not have been checked off if I don't select the JSF, but since I did select JSF, they're automatically selected for me. So I go ahead and click Finish, and uh, within less than a minute, um, the uh, application is being generated. All of the software components are being generated. All of the li required libraries are being added to the project. All of the Spring configurations and um, JSF configurations are being uh, applied to the project as well. And this is what the project looks like right here. We'll dive into that in a little bit more detail within a few minutes, but, uh, but uh, within less than a minute, um, I had a lot of stuff automatically generated for me. So now what I need to do is to actually deploy this application to Tomcat. Now before I do that, I need to make a, a minor modification to Tomcat. Um, so I can do that by right-clicking on it and selecting Configure Server Connector. And from within here, I want to go down to the Paths configuration, and I need to add two libraries to my class path. The reason why I need to do this is because the expression language libraries that are that come with Tomcat by default um, are, are are older versions of the expression language, and JSF requires a newer version of the expression expression language libraries. So all I'm doing here is just specifying that I want Tomcat to use the newer libraries rather than the default libraries that are that are automatically distributed with with Tomcat. So I've already done that, um, so let me just go ahead and click OK. And now what I can do is right click on the project and select Run as My Eclipse Server Application. And within just a few moments, um, you know, the application is deployed and uh, ready to go. So now uh, let's just take a quick, do a quick walk through this application. So what we're looking at here is basically the main menu. Um, we call it the dashboard, and it's basically what you use to navigate to all the different you know, software components that were generated for your application. Um, so in this case, I only selected Java Server Faces, so there's only one section, and I and I, uh, you know, generated from four different entities. And so this is how I can access the respective software components for each of those entities. So if I go to, for example, View Offices, it will actually um, show me um, a list of offices. And this is where I'm seeing the JSFs and Prime Faces implementation. So uh, I have a table here. Um, and uh, I can then, from this table, I can view the specific entity details as well as you'll see that since Office had a one-to-many relationship with employee, in addition to seeing the Office details, I'm also seeing the related entities. So I'm seeing a list of employees, and I can continue to manage the, the related entities here as well. Um, if I want to delete, I can go ahead and click the delete icon, and it takes me to a delete screen where I need to confirm that I want to delete it. And if I want to edit it, I can click on the edit, and it provides me with an edit screen. Um, so these are all JSF components that I can use. Um, uh, that I can use, uh, w you know, that you can use in, in in your applications. So I go back to the dashboard. The other ones are all basically the same. Uh, the same basic idea. Um, if we take a look at payments, for example, um, one of the things you'll notice is the pagination. So since we have several pages worth of data, rather than showing all the data on one on the screen at one time, um, we're automatically generating the uh, UIs so that they leverage pagination wherever um, wherever it makes sense. So, so I'll go back to the dashboard. So that's basically, that was a quick run through of the application, what it looks like from a runtime perspective. So now let's take a look at what was actually generated. So when I open up this project, you'll see, among other things, you'll see a lot of libraries that were added to the project, um, including the JSF and the Prime Faces libraries. Um, 
And um, then if we start at the top, we the resources folder is where we have all of our spring configurations. This is where we have our resource bundles um, and uh, Jax, well, no, we're not using JaxWS, so that's empty. But uh, this is basically where we have all of our property files and all of our spring configuration files. In the generated folder, this is a source code folder, and this is where we have all of the code that was generated um, all of the Java source code. So the DAO package has the data access objects for each of the entities that we generated from. So you'll see there's one for customer, employee, office, and payment. And those are implemented as, um, as spring data access objects. And then if we go to the domain folder, this is where we actually have all, each of the JPA entities for uh, each of the entities that we generated from. So we have customer, employee, office, and payment. And then we go into service, and this is where we have actually the spring services that support the JSF front end. So we have uh, separate services for customer, employee, office, and payment. And in addition to having the implementation, we also generate the interface, and we also generate the JUnit tests as well. And then for JSF, these are all of the spring components that are serving as the JSF um, beans that are handling all of the uh, events that can be triggered from the JSF front ends. So if I open this up, um, you'll notice that we have all of the different methods for all of the different events that can be fired from the, from the front end. So that is uh, the generated code. And then when we go down into the web root folder, this is where you'll find all of the JSF components, and they're broken out into separate folders. So you know we were looking at payment. So for payment, here are the five different uh, uh, JSF XHTML files that were generated, one for create, delete, edit, list, and view. So if we take a look at the um, edit, and I open this up with the uh, XHTML editor, you'll see that this is just standard HXT XHTML, and we are leveraging both JSF and Prime Faces uh, as part of the implementation. Um, one of the things you'll notice in here is that we also make a reference to a JSF template, and that template is located, as you can see from the path here, it's located in the web in folder under JSF. So I can open up this template, and this template is uh, an easy way for you to actually override um, the general look and feel of the application. So there's not very much in it right now. Uh, you can create your own template and use that, of course, um, or you can modify this one if, if you prefer. Um, and the one last thing, let's see, is there anything else? The themes, we have all of the Prime Faces themes automatically included in here. Um, and uh, so by default we're using this theme um, but if you want to use any of the other themes you're welcome to as well we'll talk more about themes in just a moment and that is pretty much it we have the you know the web.xml is automatically configured um, you know with JSF um, and spring and everything is wired up ready to go and um, you know that's true because I just showed you the running application. So you have the standard configuration there you know, uh, for both JSF, Prime Faces, and Spring all pre-configured for you. Um, and then you actually have the Faces uh, configuration file in here, which is um, uh, which is uh, use, which is among other things showing you, um, you know, specifying where all of the resource bundles are for the JSF application. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment as well. So that is basically what the application looks like from a design standpoint. That concludes part one of the JSF and Prime Faces code generation screencast. Um, if you're interested in trying out My Clips for Spring, you can go to the following URL. And if you're interested in seeing um, part two of the screencast or any of the other screencasts from My Clips for Spring, please visit the My Clips for Spring YouTube channel. Um, and you can also follow us on Twitter at, at Genuatech or at Skyway Software. Thank you very much.